Hi, I'm Shannon from Abe Books, and today I'd like to share with you a unique gift that I'll be giving my childhood friend for her wedding shower. The Real Homekeeper, A Perpetual Honeymoon for the Vancouver Bride, is a rare book published in 1913. The expectations of a new wife were a lot different a hundred years ago than they are today. The book acted as a handbook and shop directory filled with recipes, helpful hints, and advertisements written by the shop owners for the new bride. The first task for a newly married couple was to find somewhere to live. You could buy a nice cozy bungalow for $425 with just $100 down from the Maritime Trust, while the Canadian investment company claimed, happy's the bride who's in her own home, for you see she has no rent to pay. Happy's the man who's thought ahead and has saved for a rainy day, offering loans at 5%. The daring couple could choose to move to Port Alberni on Vancouver Island, where lots started at $150 and claimed to be one of the livest cities in the West where you could make $2 grow where $1 was before. The wife was in charge of the kitchen. The book contains many recipes for all occasions, from an informal dinner of soup, fish and roast to a full 12 course meal. Many of the recipes have not stood the test of time, listing ingredients that are no longer available or combinations that today sound less than appealing. The book also provides tables and charts for measurements and how long to cook meats and veggies. Some familiar names such as Nabob Coffee, Tetley Teas and Purdy's Chocolates appear throughout. There are many words of wisdom about all aspects of the household. Ridding dry hair means a tonic of almond, rosemary and cinnamon oils, while it is advised that cutting a girl's hair monthly will turn fine hair coarse. Burns can be treated with baking soda, while saving a person on fire requires you to seize a blanket from a bed or a cloak or a carpet or any woolen material. Lastly, olive oil may cure gastric trouble, appendicitis, a cold, dry skin, or being too thin. It was also important for a housewife to know that salt would curdle new milk, that soda crackers were more crisp if put in a hot oven, and that by dipping a knife in hot water before cutting into new bread would make for a better slice. Editions were also printed for brides in Hamilton, Toronto, Montreal, and Winnipeg, and in 1928 the name changed to The Bride's Book. This publication is a look back to a different time, providing a historical and interesting picture of a newly married couple in 1913.